T minus two minutes and counting. This is the Titan Module One launch atop the Saturn 9A rocket. We now have confirmation from the control center that the updates received by the launch vehicle and spacecraft are correct. We are in a go condition at this point in the countdown. During the final moments of the count, the vehicle will go on internal power on its batteries in the launch vehicle. T minus 90 seconds and counting. It's a clear day at the Cape right now with some clouds, but the forecast for tonight is for scattered thunderstorms, so there was some concern whether the weather would lead to a delay of the launch, but right now it's a seasonal 87 degrees Fahrenheit. We continue to be a go at this time. T minus 60 seconds and counting. T minus 50. T minus 40. During these final moments of the count, the pre-valves in the launch vehicle will open to permit the fuel and oxidizer to come down towards the chamber of the rocket. T minus 30 seconds and counting. T minus 20. T minus 15. T minus 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, ignition, and liftoff. We have liftoff of Titan Module 1 on the Saturn 9A rocket at 4.24 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And the rocket looks good. The F1 engine giving 7,700 kilonewtons of thrust launching rocket away from Kennedy Space Center. Thirty-five seconds after launch, the rocket is 2,000 meters in altitude, 132 meters per second in speed. T plus 50, 4,400 meters, 270 meters per second, uh, half a kilometer downrange. The vehicle is now supersonic. 9,000 meters, 365 meters per second, 2.2 kilometers downrange. All systems are nominal. T plus 1 minute and 35 seconds. We are 21 kilometers in altitude, 690 meters per second in speed, and 8.9 kilometers downrange. There are weather concerns about the Titan Module 2 launch on Thursday. There are thunderstorms scheduled for that day and we will have updates about whether there might be a possible delay or whether things will go according to plan. T plus 2 minutes 10 seconds. The rocket is at 50 kilometers in altitude, 1,386 meters per second and 27.8 kilometers down range. Getting ready for first stage separation here. And we hear first stage burnout. Stage separation. Fairing separation. We are going with payload fairing separation at the same time as first stage separation on this launch as with the previous launch of the Saturn 9. And the second stage is lit. All systems are nominal and the Saturn 9 continues to orbit.
For updates about whether there may be a possible delay to the Titan Module 2 launch on Thursday due to weather conditions, you can check out the website at www.elegantdesignbureau.com and the Kerbals are hard at work trying to add features to the website and they would appreciate any feedback. However, the site is still in early stages but we'll give the necessary information. We see the rocket now departing over the Atlantic Ocean. A view of the clouds that may bring thunderstorms later tonight. T plus 3 minutes and 40 seconds. We are at 155 kilometers in altitude, 2,040 meters per second in speed, and 187 kilometers downrange. This is the first time the Saturn IX rocket is carrying its full load of 20 tons. The Module 1 of the station, as with Module 2 of the station, will be the full capacity of the rocket. The difference between the Saturn 9 and the Saturn 9A is simply the payload fairing. The payload fairing for the Saturn 9 is only 4 meters in diameter, whereas the fairing for the Saturn 9A is 5 meters. However, that necessitates a resizing of the second stage as well, though not a change in the mass or the duration of the second stage. It's simply a matter of changing it from a conical 4 meters to four, uh, 5 meter diameter stage to a, just a straight 5 meter diameter stage. The rocket is now 195 kilometers in altitude, 2,274 meters per second and 298 kilometers downrange as we now see the onboard camera of the Titan Module 1 and hopefully yes we get solar panel deployment and we will probably also get uh, antenna deployment as systems are checked out. These are rugged solar panels able to withstand the acceleration being produced at this point. Obviously the full space station will have the magnificent solar panel arrays but this is just the first module and these small solar panels will provide the necessary power for its own systems. The cost of Module 1, by the way, is $357 million. The main cost is the Mobile Processing Lab, MPL-LG-2, from Integrated Integrals, and that came at a cost of $218 million. The main crew facilities, the Hitchhiker Storage Container, produced by Jebediah Kerman's Junkyard and Spaceship Parts Company, uh, came in at a cost of $92 million, which uh, Jeb described as, of course, a bargain. Speaking of Jebediah Kerman, by the way, his astronaut cohort has grown in recent days. Not only is there Bill and Bob Kerman, we now have Shelby Kerman, Guzman Kerman, Curler Kerman, and Billy Bobbert Kerman, who have all been added to the ranks of the Elegant Design Bureau astronaut crew. and. With this launch being successful, we hope, they will now have a destination. Titan Module 1 has two docking ports. One is the 3.7 meter docking port that will connect to Module 2 that will be hopefully launched later this week. And the other docking port is a 2 meter docking port that is used to facilitate the arrival of crew. And so with this module in space, crew can come aboard. And here we see some more of the onboard camera work as the vehicle is quickly approaching orbit. The second stage will use its full six minutes and that being necessary to launch the full payload. And so we expect it to burn out in about one minute and ten seconds. The J-2 rocket, of course, is capable of relights and capable of burning for much longer periods of time, as was seen during the Apollo missions, and we may yet see that in future launchers from the Elegant Design Bureau.
10 minutes and 55 seconds into the launch, we are at 244 kilometers in altitude, 6,655 meters per second in speed, and 1,714 kilometers downrange. And just waiting for a second stage burnout here, as then the vehicle will definitely be in orbit. And there it is, the second stage is out, and we have an orbit of 209.76 kilometers by 544.88 kilometers. A bit high on the apoapsis, but uh, with uh, some slight adjustment from the RCS ports on board Module 1, and perhaps some later adjustments with the station keeping rockets aboard Module 2, that should be quite acceptable. very good orbit according to the people at the command center and now we're just waiting for payload separation from the second stage ah there we are and hopefully the RCS can push us away waiting for RCS to pull the station module away from the second stage here seems like there is some problem with the RCS system we'll be able to give you a word on that momentarily indeed it doesn't seem to be pushing the module away though thankfully the module is drifting away from the second stage The onboard cameras will attempt to take a look at what might be going on here. Not very easy to see the RCS ports from this position with the camera. It wasn't uh, anticipated to be any problems with them, and of course, diagnosing any problems with an exterior camera is not really not really the way to do things. However, it seems like fuel is not being fed from the Stratus 5 cylindrified monopropellant tanks. There is no fuel coming out of those tanks. So, the current diagnosis is that the tanks are not feeding properly into the RCS system. Fortunately, the, the vehicle is in orbit so there's minimal concern about it at this point uh, the second module will be able to dock with it even though it's not in an ideal orbit and hopefully module 2 will be able to bring it down into an orbit that will be more accessible to future missions And we can confirm uh, issues with the RCS thrusters aboard Module 1 of Titan Station, but that this will not be a mission critical failure. And so we hope to see the launch of Module 2 on Thursday, followed by the docking between Module 1 and Module 2 on early Friday. And that will be weather permitting depending on the forecast for thunderstorms at the Cape and whether those are considered to be detrimental to the launch. Werner von Kerman says that uh, even with mild rain the launch should be able to go forward but there are other issues and uh, certainly would, we would not like lightning to strike the vehicle as has happened on other launches from the Cape in the past. And so, with that, with Titan Module 1 successfully in orbit, uh, this will be the end of our broadcast. The EDB will now be signing off. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.